for this in case we need it. So problem 5.13 says the following. We have refrigerants, 1, 3, 4, 8, which is your old buddy, not your old pal, which means you know all about its tables and you don't have trouble grabbing properties for it. And this refrigerant is flowing through a pipe of 28 centimeters of diameter. All right, so if it's a pipe and they don't say anything about it being uh, out of the ordinary pipe, just it's a normal pipe, and the diameter on one end has to be the diameter on the second end, right? So it's 28 centimeters throughout. We go in with 200 kilopascals and 20 Celsius. And our velocity is five meters per second. And we leave this guy at 180 kilopascals and 40 Celsius, okay? Uh, for this to happen, 20 to 40, that means we have to have a certain type of energy going in, right? From one side to the other, okay. Uh, heat is supplied, go. Heat is supplied, it's our source of energy. Heat is supplied to the gas as it flows and leaves the pipe. So we are to, we are to determine the volume flow rate at the inlet mass flow rate also at the inlet, uh, and then the velocity and the volume flow rate at the outlet. Okay, so there's no tricks here. Get this right. Cool. Okay, so there's really no tricks here. You've probably seen this before on your other classes, so that's why I want to um, go fast on this one. All right, so A, we want a volume flow rate. For these questions, I'll put volume as VOL, so that we don't get confused with velocity as V, okay? So a volume flow rate, it can be a volume for a little dot on top, or it's the same thing as saying it's the derivative of the volume in respect to time, right? How the volume is changing with time, flux, okay? And you guys probably remember this, the velocity, all the velocity is, is the rate at which distance is changing with time, right? What would be the units for this guy here? Well, that's going to be meters cubed per second, right? Just by analyzing what we're talking about. And this guy here is meters per second. So as long as we can multiply this guy by an area, meters squared, we can grab the volumetric flow rate, as simple as that. Which area would that be? Well, it's the surface area over here, cross-sectional area, I should say. Cross-sectional area, the idea is that there's an area here and there's five meters squared of gas that's going through this area all the time, right? Going, going back and forth, not back and forth, just through it. Okay, so if we multiply that area, this cross-sectional area, by the velocity, we can grab the volumetric flow rate, as simple as that. And this area here is gonna be P pi r squared. So our volumetric flow rate will be five meters per second times pi r, and I need that in meters squared, so I'm going to be, it's going to be 28 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, divided by 2, because I need the radius, not the diameter, squared. That's meters squared, which will render 0 0.308 meters cubed per second. Okay, so no mysteries there, nothing new on the horizon for you guys. Now, the next part, we want the mass flow rate on the inlet. So we want to know how much mass is coming through this guy here. So if we have the volumetric flow rate, and we do, we just got it. And if we have the specific volume, we can find the mass flow rate, right? Because the specific volume, the, the, the definition of it is precisely a relationship between volume and mass. And you guys are experts on grabbing volume flow rate already, okay? All we need to do is grab on the table. Um, I'm going to have a look on the table now, uh, on the table. The specific volume for um, refrigerants, R134, at 200 kilopascals and 20 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and do that. Missing pi. Oh, no, there's a pi there. Where's my, where's my pie? Have you seen pie somewhere else? Okay, cool. Awesome. So let's have a look at our uh, specific volume. Property table. 
refrigerant is down here. Oops, went too long. A13, A11. Okay, two ways to look at it. We can look, since we have both temperature and pressure, we can look at the temperature table and then relate the pressure or vice versa. I'll do the pressure just because I found from the previous classes that it makes more sense for you guys to think this way. But either way is going to render the same conclusion. Okay, what is the conclusion? Check it out. Our first state is at 200 kilopascals, so we're right here. And the saturated temperature is minus 10 Celsius. Okay, so the saturated temperature is minus 10 Celsius. Our actual temperature is 20 Celsius. So what does that tell us? What's the state of this fluid? Superheated. Superheated. Perfect, right? Superheated. Because it's above the saturated temperature. Exactly the definition of it. Since we're here, let's go ahead and look at this other state. The other state is 180. And the saturated temperature of the other state is minus 12 Celsius. Our actual temperature is 40 Celsius. So again, same conclusion, superheated. Okay. So wrong table. Actual table is a superheated table. We are looking for 0.2 megapascals. So we're looking for this guy here. And we're looking at 20. So this is our specific volume here for the first state. Go ahead and write that down because I'm not going to come back here afterwards. And for the second state, we are looking at 0.18 megapascals at 40 Celsius. So 40 Celsius over here. And this is the specific volume for the outlet, second state. Write those down. Those are all meters cubed per kilogram. And then we can go back and continue our math. Okay. So let's think about it. So we'll, we grab the properties at table A13. So let's think about it this way. My mass times my specific volume has to be equal to my volume. So if I take the derivative in respect to time on both sides, obviously, you'll note that my specific volume does not change with time, right? As long as I have 200 kilopascals and 20 Celsius, my specific volume is going to be the same regardless of how much time passes. So this comes out of the derivative. And therefore, a simpler way to write this is the mass flow rate and the volume flow rate. So if we want the mass flow rate, we just get the volumetric flow rate that we do have divided by the specific volume. We can grab the mass flow rate. Okay, so let's do it over here. Mass flow rate will be my volume flow rate, 0 0.308 meters cubed per second and divide that by 0 0.11418 meters cubed per kilogram. Meters cubed, meters cubed, we're left with kilogram per second, which is precisely what we're after, mass flow rate. Okay, this is going to be approximately 2.7. Actual value that I got is 2.6974. Okay, so we got our mass flow rate, Kill that one. And now we go to the last part, part C. Okay, so let's go to part C. Uh, what am I going to do with part C? Let me see if you want this. So on part C, we're looking for um, what does it ask us? The velocity on the outlet and the volume flow rate on the outlet. Okay, so first thing we need to talk about is mass conservation concept of mass conservation, which is going to follow us a lot. Well, the principle is the same as energy, right? We can create a destroy mass. Um, but the idea is, if we have mass going into this pipe here, it has to eventually leave this pipe here. Okay. So in other words, the refrigerant we're dealing with, which is the R134A, there's no way for this guy to accumulate on this pipe. Right? This obviously will be true if we have a sludge or sewage or particles inside, or if we have a pipe that's not smooth, we can have exceptions. But for our cases here and for a lot of engineering cases, that will be the case. So mass flow rate on the inlet, so put in, has to be equal to the mass flow rate on the outlet. It has to be true for all these open analysis systems. Okay? Eventually, the mass that goes in here has to eventually leak. Okay, 
with that in mind, and we're going to use that a lot in other problems from here on. So with that in mind, um, we need to note that the volume does change, right? Because while the mass flow is going to be the same on the inlet and outlet, the, the volume changes because our properties change. Okay, so we can we can relate the same way we did before. We can relate to find the velocity and the volume because the volume, as we just discussed over here, right? The mass flow rate two times the specific volume two has to be equal to the volume flow rate two. Right? It's literally what we did here before, right? Now, because of this principle here the mass flow rate one and two are the same, and we have that specific volume we can grab off the table, and that's all we need to find the volume flow rate two. Okay, um, from the table we just got this, this was 0.13, so that means it's just gonna be 2.7 uh, kilograms per second times the specific volume, which is 0.13741. Kilograms, kilograms, we're left with meters cubed per second. So our volume flow rate mm -hmm. is 0 0.37 uh, seconds. Okay, simple as that, no tricks. Then last but not least, using exactly the same relationship as in the beginning, right? We're after the velocity, and we noticed that the where is it? The volume flow rate was the velocity times the cross-sectional area, right? So the volume flow rate is the velocity times the cross-sectional area. So therefore, the velocity that we're after, velocity two, will be the volume flow rate two divided by cross-sectional area two, which, by the way, is the same as one because the pipe did not change. Okay, so this is 0 0.37 meters cubed per second. And we're dividing this by pi, 28 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 2 squared. That's meters squared. All right, meters squared cuts the cube, so we're just left with meters per second. Precisely the unit of volume that we're after, and this renders 6.01 meters per second. Okay. No tricks here, nothing new under the sky for you guys, hopefully, okay? So the idea is that we looked at this to see what would be the a normal situation when we have this, and we're gonna jump into problems in which we have engines, uh, not engines, sorry, in which we have uh, nozzles and turbines, which would take advantage of the difference in area and the difference in energy from one state to the other to either increase our velocity or decrease our velocity. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.